Welcome to Moving Forward with Upanor. I'm Daniel. And I'm Marcus. And we're going to be here every Thursday talking to you about all things Upanor, including plumbing, mechanical, and industry. If you guys have any questions for us, make sure and post those down below, and we will try and answer those to the best of our ability. Um, if you like this video, make sure and like and subscribe to make sure that you guys get notifications and get the most recent videos as we send them out. So we've talked about a lot of cool things in some of our other videos. We talked about you know, starting out as Wurzbo, kind of how we've got here, move into commercial. We've talked about solutions, products, hangers, supports. What's on the docket for today? Well, one thing, what I want to talk about today, Daniel, is, you know, around a question and topic that we get frequently, you know, being a polymer solution with our um, PEXA product, um, our ProPEX type fittings, is we want to make sure that the industry understands that we comply to fire resistive construction. Um, you know, and I really think we should break down, you know, what are different type of um, common scenarios, different scenarios for fire resistive construction at the, at the bit for the building. Um, and then for the uh, piping systems too, you know, that Upanor's Aquapex and Hepex meet the different ASTM requirements um, along with, you know, what, it, what requirements are carried by the manufacturer and what are created by the type of construction or third party. Um, so let's dive into that. Yeah, so I think the first thing we'll talk about are some of the common scenarios you mentioned, right? So really when you look at commercial construction, there's really three different scenarios you're going to run into. And we kind of have some graphics on the back here and we'll try and maybe, you know, post some links to those below. Um, but really the first one's going to be fire partitions. And fire partitions are going to be the least restrictive, so these are typically one to three hour and most commonly found between let's say a corridor and a living unit like a hotel unit or a apartment building sure so that's like the the wall between between each hotel room or the the wall between your hallway and your room um, would be a fire uh, partition fire partition yep the next one's going to be a fire barrier and this one's going to be a little less common and because at least from an mep standpoint so typically this is going to be more around stairwells and mechanical chases. So if you find yourself having to penetrate piping uh, or run within a chase um, or a stairwell, you may be having to go through a, a fire uh, barrier. That's right. And then the last one that, we, that, we, that we'll talk about, which is the most restrictive, are firewalls. And we get that um, mixed up a lot when we start talking to customers. So it's something that we like to set straight. You know, when they're saying, hey, I got to go through a firewall. Well, is it a firewall or is it a penetration or barrier or partition? You know, so with a firewall, it's the most restrictive. Um, and that one is usually in what type of scenario application? Yeah, so usually it's always a wall. It's always vertical. And typically, it's actually going to separate occupancy classification. So, you know, maybe between like rate, retail and residential, for example, you might have a firewall uh, where it's actually separating those two different occupancy classes. That's great, Daniel. So now that we set the stage for uh, fire resistive construction, let's talk about the first um, standard, ASTM standard E119 for assemblies. Right. You know, so with assemblies, now we're not talking, you know, it's not talking about the assembly, the piping system. We're talking about inside walls, inside chases. Right, so as an assembly, you know, we're looking at different parts of a building, right? So wall structures, floor structures, ceilings, and anytime that you have a rated floor or wall and your piping system is going to run within that, you need some sort of rated assembly. And that's where ASTM E119 comes in. And like Marcus said, that one in particular is something that we as a manufacturer carry. So we have uh, assemblies that we physically test with a UL rated testing lab, a third party lab. And we then can use those as they come up within, you know, different applications. So like we're talking about, you know, if you have to run within a fire rated wall, uh, whether it be wood frame, steel, concrete, whatever it is, we more than likely have a rated assembly for that. Right, and that's, you know, I think you had mentioned earlier, that's the occupied space or our piping system, right. our, uh, you know, uh, Aquapex or Hepex piping system occupying that space within that wall, within that chase. Right. So the next one we'll hit on is probably the more common one, and that's ASTM E814. Now these are going to be your penetration listings. So anytime your piping system has to penetrate through a floor, ceiling, or wall that's rated, you're going to have to have some sort of rated assembly um, to ASTM E814. And these are actually held by the third party suppliers of things like, you know, the different fire caulkings, which we'll talk about, or the cast in place devices like these for your walls and floors. 
when we talk through uh, the ASTM E814 penetration standard, you know, when you've mentioned third party um, requirements, if it's carried by the third party, what we're saying is there would be some other type of application, um, whether it be a caulk uh, for a filler type material or a sleeve type material. And we have a few examples here, um, like you have mentioned. So when it's third party, it's not so much the um, open doors piping system, it's there's going to be another provider with there. So you know, as if customers are out there, there's a job site situation that requires a penetration, a fire uh, resistive construction for a penetration to meet the ASTM uh, E814. You know, if there's one that there's questions, you know, Upanor is there to support it. We have a tech services department uh, and we will also reach out to that, that third party and coordinate with them to, to meet that fire requirement. Right, so as Marcus mentioned, uh, these a ASTM E814 listings are carried by the third party supplier. So there's a bunch of different manufacturers out there that have listings for PEX. And basically the way it works is that us as a manufacturer, um, we get a customer comes to us and says, hey, I have this problem I need with your product. We're going through X wall. Can we figure it out? I prefer X brand. And we will work with that brand, we'll donate product. And then we probably help also assist with the, the paying for the testing. And then we have a tested assembly, just like with the one, E119 uh, stuff that we talked about. And now you can actually go to that manufacturer um, and leverage uh, those assemblies. So as Marcus mentioned, there's also different ways to do that, right? So one of the more common ways to do that for sealing a penetration through a fire rated wall or floor is with a, a caulking or a sealant. And the one thing to point out here that's important with plastic pipe is that this is always going to be intumescent. And what that essentially means is that when fire, uh, when the pipe is exposed to fire and it actually melts, this intumescent caulking actually expands and fills that void. So that's different than metallic systems, right? So that's one thing to imp that's important to remember when you're looking at uh, different fire caulks. So that's exactly right, Daniel. There's also other solutions too, where you're making a penetration through a floor. Uh, this one here is a prime example where you might have a poor deck, PT type deck, where it's a pre-sleeve type uh, uh, from, a, from a manufacturer that meets that ASTM E814 that you're able to run uh, pipe or pipe through. Right, and these are really cool because basically they get secured down to your, your, your plywood forms normally before the, before the concrete's poured. Um, and most manufacturers actually have these specific to either plastic pipe or metallic pipe and they're color coded. So you really can't mess it up, right? So you go around, you lay this out on your forms and you know one color might be plastic one color might be metallic and then it's literally there once the concrete's poured you knock the caps out of them and you run your piping through them and you have your assembly so they're super slick uh, obviously way better than core drilling especially on pt decks when you don't want to be messing with uh, potentially hitting a post tension cable that's right um as marcus mentioned too we have tons of resources on this so in our design manual we actually have a table laid out for all the different kinds of you know astm e814 uh, applications that you can need, whether it's one hour up to three hour, steel, concrete, wood, whatever it might be. Yeah, so go ahead and check us out online about compatibility for some of the caulks and fillers that we have out there, um, or reach out and comment too on this video. Right. So let's shift gears now and talk about one of the biggest questions we get or the most common questions we get on ASTM E84, yes. air plenum. So let's talk about that, Daniel, and kind of I don't want to say debunk, but really decipher what is an air plenum and what's not an air plenum. Right. So I think to Marcus's point, right, when we get customers calling in and saying, hey, I'm running your pipe in a plenum, the, the terms used pretty generally, right? We say, okay, let's take a step back and let's make sure that we're actually talking about a return air plenum and kind of all the requirements that have to go with that, right? So just to make sure everybody's on the same page, a return air plenum is when you're actually using a space to move return air for an HVAC system, right? So it's, it's not ducted, like as you could see in a, in a traditional HVAC system with supply and return air. It's where you're actually using the space for return air. And obviously, if you have a fire in a space where there's air moving and free air moving, that's not a good thing. So there's obviously a lot of requirements that come along with that. Yeah, and common, you know, some common, common scenarios that we see for return air plenums, just you know, as an example, is maybe in office space or retail space where there's a drop ceiling right. type, and that return air comes through grills or open space to return that air uh, to the equipment. So just really want to decipher that too. Another common. Um, 
question that we get is or confusion is around chases. Not all chases, you know, necessarily are air plenums. They may right. be, but uh, they may not be. So it's really, you know, when we say, does it air plenum rain? A, you know, is your piping system air plenum rain? And the answer is yes. We like to help make sure that we are talking about uh, an air plenum return with the customer and then really we can because that'll help us provide the information that that customer needs that letters and we can talk you know further that define with that customer how and why we do meet that ASTM 84 which let's let's talk about that right because obviously when you return when you're installing product within a return air plenum uh, the installation requirements are more stringent than a typical installation so obviously if we can make sure, number one, that you either are in a return air plenum actually or not, we can help save you some money and make sure that you're not, for example, you know, needing to put an insulation on there, for example, or using PEXA pipe support just to try and meet E84 when you're not in an actual return air plenum. That's right. We do have three different uh, listing assemblies or assemblies tested and listed in the U.S., uh, depending upon your pipe size, um, depending upon what you're looking at doing, whether it's bare pipe, whether it's insulation like we talked about, or whether it's with PEXA pipe support. So we have all that information on our website, opener-usa.com, and also in our design manuals. We have tons of information on that. So um, one last thing I want to hit on is UL2846. And the reason I mention this is because it's becoming more and more popular. Um, and basically what it is, is it's a uh, standard specifically for plastic pipe that's very similar to E84. And the reason it's kind of come about is because E84 is and was specifically created for building products and specifically flat stock building products. So when you test it, it's meant to test like board stock material. You start trying to test things that are cylindrical or round, it gets to be very difficult and doesn't necessarily provide a true, you know, result as to what the product or how the product performs. So together with Upanor and different industry affiliations, this UL2846 standard has come about um, and it's starting to gain a lot of traction. So you might start seeing that uh, pop up in your different code books as well, um, similar to E84. So if you guys like uh, these videos, obviously make sure and like and subscribe below. Again, if you've got questions on anything that we've talked about, whether it's fire rated or just Upanor in general, make sure and submit those to the links down below. And thanks again for watching. Thank you.